Dale, dale. Yeah, I, I've talked to you twice already about your actions. And, what? and the other day, you almost ran me off the road. Could you please drive respectfully and obey the law when you're here? What is your problem with me, man? I'm at home on my day off. What is your problem with me? I, I, saw, I just realized it was your... You almost ran me off the road the other what day. I thought you were in the neighborhood. Doing what? On 324th Street. I have some dude for a little watching the window. I have some dude for a little watching the window. What is your problem with you? I have no problem with you. Did I have no problem No, I... No, you, you continually okay. violate the law. Can you just respect the law and not Whatever. speed and, and not stop and not run through stop signs down here? I, I, I would appreciate that. The next time I will go to your supervisor. The last three times I didn't. I'm, I'm on the property. I was just I'm, I'm asking you to please obey the law. I'm, I'm asking you to please obey the law, sir. Detective Alvarez, badge number 7563, conduct an investigation under case PD 1302150603380. Um, this interview is being conducted in my unmarked police car in the parking lot of the Walgreens located at uh, US 1 and West Palm Drive? 344? 344 uh, Street. Also present in the car is Detective Webster, badge number 5567. And I'm um, speaking today with uh, Officer Gomez from the Monroe County Sheriff Department. Sir, what's your badge number? 6119. Sir, can you raise your right hand for me? Everything you tell me is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. It is. Okay. Um, sir, I'm going to recall you to an incident that took place on October 29th, 2012. Um, i drop that. Uh, in which you were... Uh, we know we talked on the phone about this, so I was just going to recap basically what you told me on the phone. Um, as I recall, per our conversation on the phone, uh, you were outside of your house in your police car when you observed the incident with uh, involving Officer Margrito and um, Mr. Uh, McDowell. McDowell. Um, can you tell me a little bit in your words what happened that day? I was sitting in my police car, in my marked patrol car, which is parked in front of the re my residence, in the parking lot, which faces 324th Street, uh, right in the middle of... Southwest 202 Avenue and Southwest 203 Court. Um, McGuido's house is across the street, just a little uh, off, off, uh, off of my house, so visible from my parking lot. I see a white male walking on 324th Street, and I see him stop in front of McGuido's residence. McGuido was already outside working on his vehicles. Uh, working in the garage area which was open and a uh, white male stopped in front of his house and started screaming at the Guido. Uh, male took a step into his property and started and the Guido I can hear him yelling at him to get off the property. Uh, there was a verbal uh, altercation between both of them. Uh, the male refused to leave. Maguido went inside his garage at one point. That's when the male started walking away. Could you make out anything that was being said back and forth? No, just the, the, the part where you you can see the hand gestures and there was the screaming and uh, Maguido screaming at the top of his lungs get, you know, to get off my property and the guy just wouldn't leave. He wouldn't leave. Let me ask you, in, in your opinion, did you feel like uh, the subject, uh, Mr. McDowell, was he being aggra was he being aggressive towards Austin Maguido? Aggressive. It was aggressive in the tone, the screaming, the hand gestures. He was upset, he was angry, and he was directing all of it towards at Maguido. Okay. Um, and let me ask you, um, how long do you think the incident lasted altogether? A couple minutes. A couple minutes. Uh, were you in your uniform? No. You were just in your plain clothes? Plain clothes, sitting in the patrol car. In the patrol car, okay. Um, Okay, so then what happens next? So you see Officer Maguido walk into his garage, and the, the man finally leaves? The man finally starts walking away. Okay. Um, he starts walking away. Officer Maguido says that at, at one point, when he's back in his garage, he realizes that this is the same individual that had uh, had um, been into his house previously, and he leaves to go try to find the gentleman. At, at what point do you get involved? I see the man start walking away. Magu Maguido comes back, comes outside and wa watches the man as he's walking towards 202 Avenue and then proceeds to jump in his 
vehicle mm -hmm. and follow the mail to see where it was going. I, I assume it was to call. He was on the phone with 911 or on his radio. Okay. And he wanted to tell him where he, this man was going. I, I felt that Magrito was by himself and being an officer, you mm -hmm. know, helping him out. I went in my, my marked patrol vehicle and I went down to see what was happening, making sure that Officer Magrito was, was safe. Okay. I didn't get involved. I just watched from a distance, you watched. making sure that okay. that he was okay. And let me ask you, um, and what made you do this? Because out, out, out of concern for Officer Magrito, or like just like what made you like, um, like were you in Pri fear for his safety? Prior to this incident, even though we are neighbors and he lives in front of me, basically in front of me, I had not spoken to Magrito. Mm -hmm. He keeps to himself. I keep to himself. We never exchange words. Um, but because again I saw how this aggressive this man was towards Miguido and how he was screaming at him and yelling at him and the hand gestures again uh, and then Miguido I can tell how upset he became with this whole situation I felt that just I needed to go and make sure that that Officer Miguido was, was okay did you see anything take any, like, did, anything t did Officer Miguido take him into custody or did it just no, did it just stay there no, with him no Officer Miguido told him to stop uh, had him, you know, basically stopped in front of his car. Maguito was standing between his driver's door, the door jam, standing there on the radio, at, you know, getting getting back up or getting uh, calling for our assistance. Okay. Uh, Miami Dade and other unmarked vehicles arrived shortly after, and as soon as I saw he was safe, I left the area. Okay. And uh, let me ask you: Is there anything else you want to add? Like any details that you recall that stand out in your brain about the incident? I remember the guy, the white male, telling, uh, trying to start some kind of conversation with me, like trying to get me on his side. Mm -hmm. And he started saying something about um, how he was upset with with uh, Maguido for some situation, for something that had happened in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I told him, you need to stop. Mm -hmm. You need to stop and wait for the police when they get here. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Um, can you raise your right hand for me? Everything you told me was the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Awesome. Uh, that concludes this uh, interroga uh, interrogation. This interview at 8 o'clock p.m. Um, that's it.